Today in our 2017 Toyota Highlander, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the E-Trailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number E98844. So here's where a hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. It is going to sit right below the bumper with that cross tube being visible. And since it's a Class 3, it is going to offer us that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, which is going to be great for all sorts of accessories, all the way from a ball mount to tow something, a bike rack, or a cargo carrier. The way we're going to mount any of those accessories is through the hitch pin hole here on the side, and it is going to accept a standard 5 8 pin and clip. While these aren't included in the kit, you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com. As far as the safety chain connection points go, it's going to be a plate style welded to the bottom. And we're going to have plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off. And if you notice, there's going to be a slight offset from where the hitch pin hole is. So we're not going to have to worry too much about our hooks interfering with our hitch pin or a locking device. Our hitch is going to feature a 900 pound tongue weight, which is going to be the maximum downward force at the receiver tube, along with a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. Now it is rated for use with weight distribution systems, and that's going to be a separate component that's going to mount on your trailer. Now in that configuration, the tongue weight's going to stay at 900, but it's going to bump the gross trailer weight up to 8,000 pounds. Now with all those numbers in mind, you always want to double check your Toyota's owner's manual and make sure you never exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. Compared to a lot of other hitches, I really like the finish on here because it's going to have that matte carbide finish opposed to the super high glossy black finish which kind of blends in with this black section on our bumper a lot more. So even though we do see the cross tube, it kind of just blends in. I'd like to give you a few measurements. That's going to help you when deciding for accessories for your new hitch, such as a ball mount, a bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about two and three quarter inches. That measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have adequate clearance so that the accessory doesn't come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be just under 17 inches. That measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at ball mounts to find the appropriate rise or drop to match up to your trailer. So now that we've seen what the hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to have to remove the underbody panel on the bottom side of our Highlander. Now we're going to have several fasteners along the edge here that we're going to have to take out. So we'll start with the push pin fasteners. We're going to grab a flathead screwdriver come in where the notch is on the push pin and we're going to pop out the center section and then I'll take some tension off and we can pry the rest of the push pin out. If we go along the edge, find another one, it's going to be the outside edge, we'll pull that one out as well. Now we're also going to have these bolts that are holding it in place, so you're going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and we can undo those at the very back of the mud flap. And if we come along the edge here, and follow along, we'll find another one at the back. And then finally, if we come to the inside, the very top of the bottom of our cargo area, we're gonna have two plastic retaining nuts that you should be able to actually loosen these by hand. They're not going to fully come out of the cover, so you just kind of want to apply a little bit of downward pressure while you're unthreading it. If you're having trouble getting it down by hand, what you can do is you can take a 12 millimeter socket, and again, while you're putting downward pressure on it, you can loosen it because that nut's not going to fully come off. Once we have all those removed, we can pull the panel out and we'll set it aside because this will not be getting reinstalled. We're going to have these plugs and plastic caps that we're going to have to remove. For the rubber plugs, you're just going to take a flathead screwdriver and we'll pop them out. Now for the one that has the little notch in it, these are going to be plastic and these are threaded in. So you just take a flat blade screwdriver and rotate it counterclockwise until they come out. Now on the passenger side here, if we come to the back, I already went ahead and marked this section out. It's going to be right above the tailpipe and to be attached to the back of the fascia here. We're going to have to trim this section off 
Now we can leave a little bit, but I think it'll give it a cleaner look if we just come as close as we can to the back of the fascia. I'm just gonna trim this little tab off. Now you can use a pair of tin snips, a really sharp utility knife, but it is rather thick plastic. So I'm gonna be using a rotary tool. And again, I'm just gonna cut straight across, making as clean a line as I can get. I'm also gonna to have to remove the tow hook here. There's gonna be two bolts on the bottom of the frame, just on the outside of the exhaust here. I'll be using a 17 millimeter socket to pull those out. Now behind those two bolts that we pulled out, we're gonna have another large one and then a small one that's attaching this splash shield on the side. So we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and pull that small bolt out. And then again, using a 17 millimeter socket, we'll pull that other bolt out at the back. And when we pull that bolt out, we're gonna pull the bracket out as well. Now, just like the other side of the frame, we're gonna have these rubber plugs. We're gonna wanna pull those out as well. Just grab a flathead screwdriver and pry them out. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift the hitch into position. You're gonna wanna go over the exhaust on the passenger side. And then we're gonna line the three holes up on the bottom of our hitch with the three threaded holes that are in the frame. We're gonna take one of the bolts in our kit along with a conical tooth washer. You wanna make sure those teeth are facing up towards the hitch. And we're gonna get at least one bolt in hand tight on each side, that way the hitch will support itself and we get the rest of our hardware in place. So with all of our hardware in place, I'm gonna come back with a 19 millimeter socket and I'm gonna snug them all up. And with that same 19 millimeter socket and a torque wrench, I'm gonna come back and torque all my hardware to the specified amount in the instructions. We'll repeat that for any remaining hardware. Now we do have the option of putting that underbody panel back in place. We just have to do some trimming so it'll fit around our hitch. However, we're not gonna be reinstalling ours, so all we have left to do is put our spare tire back. That'll finish up your look at the E-Trailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number E98844 on our 2017 Toyota Highlander.